Hi, I'm Alan Tatro with Global Sugar Art, and today I'd like to introduce you to the PME line of daisy and uh, Gerbera uh, daisy cutters. Uh, these are a plunger cutter that are very, very easy to use. The Gerbera daisies come in several different sizes. This is just two of the, the many sizes that are available. And the Gerbera daisies actually have little embossing uh, veining in them so that it not only cuts the daisy, but it will put a little bit of veining in there. Um, the regular daisies just, just are the eight petal daisy cutter and they don't do the veining. So I'm gonna show you how to use both of those today. We're gonna start with some gum paste. I have some plain white gum paste and a little bit of cornstarch and we're gonna roll this out nice and thin. You can make your own gum paste. Um, the Tylos gum paste is one of my favorite. Or I'm using the Satin Ice gum paste. Uh, James Rizel has his own gum paste out now that's made by Fonderific. Um, when you first open the canister, you might think it's a little hard to work with. It's, it's a very firm gum paste, but it's actually one of my favorite to work with. Um, almost any gum paste will work well. So I've rolled this quite thin. Make sure that it moves freely on the board. Put a little bit of cornstarch on the top and the bottom. And we'll start with one of the, the uh, Gerbera daisies that actually veins it. So I'm gonna press down. I'm gonna move in a circular motion to make sure I get a nice clean cut. And then I'm gonna press the top. That's gonna emboss the veining down into the daisy. Pull the f uh, f gum paste away from the edge. Now flip it over and use your thumb to go over each one of these and that will deepen the cuts and make sure that you have a nice, nice cut. Now, these just pop right out. Just push the top and they pop right out. You have a nice, a nice piece to work with. Now, you can use this exactly like it is or you can embellish this a little bit and make it look a little more lifelike. And that's what I wanna show you now. So I'll put that one aside and I'm gonna cut a plain daisy. Again, I'm gonna go in a circular motion. This one doesn't have the veining in it so I just pop it right out. Uh, let's see, we'll do, we'll do another one here too, a smaller one. Circular motion, make sure it's well cut and pop that out. Now, I'm gonna take a cell pad. You can use any sort of a pad. The cell pad has a firm side and a spongy side. I'm gonna use the firm side. And this is a number 12 veining tool by Gem Products. And I'm gonna take this daisy, I'm gonna put it on the edge of the firm side of the pad. I'm gonna lay the veining tool down in the center of the petal and just go back and forth. And that's gonna widen the petal and put a little bit of, of uh, natural veining into it. And that's all there is to it. And so I'm just going back and forth. It's very quick, it's very easy, but it's gonna give you a much more lifelike looking flower. Okay, and you can do it with this one as well, the one that actually had the veining in it. If I were doing 100 cupcakes, or I had to make two or 300 daisies for a wedding cake, and I was in a production facility, a, a bakery, where I was producing many wedding cakes in a weekend, I probably wouldn't use this veining tool. I would just cut the daisies, vein them with the actual cutter, and then continue on with the job. So there we have three daisies. Now to dry them, we have these little forming cups that are made by Wilton, and these work really, really well. So this is a daisy that I did uh, yesterday, and it's all dried and ready to go. So all you do is just set those in there, and they, they have different size cups, and they work really well. And I'll show you what you can do with the very smallest daisies. You can use a little paint tray, and you can just set the daisies right down into the paint tray to let those dry. So once the daisies are made, let them dry in the formers. And 
we'll go ahead and I'll show you how to make the centers. The easiest way to make the centers is with a little bit of yellow gum paste. Okay, I'm just going to take a little bit here. And Gem makes a line of daisy centers. Uh, they come in many different sizes. This is just uh, three of them right here. I'm going to take some 24 or 26 gauge wire and a little pair of pliers. I'm going to bend the top over and then I'm going to bend it again. So I have just a little flat piece of wire. Now this is for the wired daisies. You can do them unwired as well. So I just made a little hook and then I bent it over so that it was flat on the top. So I'm going to take a little bit of cornstarch and I just want to make sure that that center uh, stamp has a little bit of cornstarch in it. Take a little piece of yellow fondant, or excuse me, yellow gum paste. Oops. And I'm going to push that right in there. And then I'm going to take the wire and I would dip it in a little bit of egg white or gum glue. And then I'm just going to basically twist that right in there and pull it out. And now I have the center of the flower and it's attached to a wire. So I would put those aside and I would let them dry. And I have a couple here that are already made. They're already dried and they're ready to go. So again, there are different size of the gem um, uh, daisy stamps and this is for the centers and you can make them wired or unwired. Let me just quickly make one that's not wired. Put a little cornstarch on there. Just push that right in. And then I just use a little needle tool to pull that out and set it down. And that's the center of my daisy. Okay, so once the center is uh, dry, I can take one of my, um, my newly cut daisies. Now you don't want to dry the daisies if you're making a wired daisy. You only want to dry the center. And I'll take a water brush or a little bit of gum glue and I'm just going to wet the center, take the wire and just go right through the center and pull that straight down. And now I've created a daisy that's wired and ready to dry. You can dry it two ways. If you want it to be more folded, you can hang it upside down, put a hook and put it on a little stand, a little drying stand. Or my favorite way to do that is to use these little forming cups again, the same ones that you would dry the flat daisies. And here's one all dry and ready to use in a, an arrangement. Put that right through the hole in the center. Just bend your wire underneath and just set them on a cup. And they'll dry in a nice cup shape. And they, they take maybe six to eight hours to dry completely, maybe overnight depending on the humidity of where you live. And you're ready to go. You're ready to make arrangements with these. Now, if you don't want to, um, uh, to wire them, just dry your daisy first. I would probably brush this with some super pearl dust first if I really wanted a nice white shiny looking daisy. Uh, put a little bit of water and then just put that center right in the middle. And there you have it. You're ready to, um, ready to decorate your cakes. And if you make these out of gum paste or a 50-50 mix of gum paste and fondant, you can make these ahead of time and you can dry them in the former and they won't get rock hard like regular gum paste will if you're using a 50-50 mix. But they will hold their shape after about four or five hours. So you could make these a day ahead of time and decorate a whole cake with daisies. They would hold their shape. They would look very lifelike, but you could still cut through them. So thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make daisies with the PME Daisy Cutter.